This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You are welcome, child of God. You are welcome, believer in Christ. This is another powerful time in the presence of God. The Bible says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And remember, joy is like it's like medicine that you take and it works good in your body. But when you are sorrowful, when you are sad, it will drain your strength, it will drain your energy, and it's not good for you. Please always make sure you are happy, happy in the Lord. The Bible says our faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we bring to you again word from the Lord. And as you're about to listen to this word, please open up your heart because God is set to do something very, very remarkable in your life. So what we what we say now, please hit that like button. Hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on the post notification bell so that each time we release any content at all, you will be notified. So, without wasting much of our time, let's get into the message of the day. God bless you. I want to pray a special prayer before we get to the teaching tonight. While I was praying for this meeting, um, I saw a word three times it came to my vision and I knew that the Lord wanted me to bring this word and then to use that word to bring liberty for someone. I saw the word limitation and I just shrugged it off. I kept praying and then I saw it the second time limitation and the third time I saw it limitation. When God begins to emphasize something like that, he's telling you that someone is on his way to church already. And this is the embargo that the devil has placed over his life, over his destiny. Maybe someone has come here for the first time asking questions and saying, Lord, is this how my life will continue to be? I love you, but it looks like something is sitting upon my destiny. To limit means to stop people from seeing the fullness of a thing. To limit means to reduce the potential of that thing it may not mean to stop it there's a difference between limitation and stagnation stagnation means you are in one place limitation means you are not moving fast enough and if you don't move fast enough with respect to time there are some things that will not happen listen please i want you to pay attention this is the house of god and when god speaks like this it is because someone's destiny has been crawling and you need to experience the grace of God. Whether you are outside, whether you are inside, listen, when a word comes and it is for you, don't just assume. No, there, there is an attitude that you used to receive the word with. Limitations. I'm going to pray for you right now. We'll just take 10 minutes from my preaching time and let me just deal with these issues once and for all over our lives for as long as we are alive let me tell you and this anointing god has given us that which represents limitation in your life bar we must crush it to its knees i'm about to pray now and i want you to please bring those people under the anointing now that the power of god comes upon in the name of jesus every family every individual every destiny that has been tied down by altars of limitation so that you will not move forward maybe you are a mother maybe you are a father maybe you are a man of god maybe you are a businessman maybe you are coming here for the first time watching online and it looks like there are altars that have vowed that you will not move forward i stand by this mantle i have been anointed by god to declare your liberty right now may the power of god come upon you be delivered now be delivered now altars of limitation you come under arrest this moment altars of limitation you come under arrest this moment altars of limitation you come under arrest this moment in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ please hear me some of you are standing not only for yourself i want to pray for families here whole families that have been tied down 
It looks apparent katabakata. Eko shekete batasukata. Every altar sitting on the apagosh katikata, sitting on the glory of any family. If I be sent by God, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic mantle. May fire fall upon that altar now. May fire fall upon that altar. Release them now. Release their destinies now. Release their destinies now. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to declare. I declare my release. Every limitation, no matter how long, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the blood of the eternal covenant. Is someone praying? Those following online, I release that anointing upon you from America to Europe to Nigeria. Parts of Africa, I declare, may the anointing of the Spirit touch you right in your room, in your office, right now. I set you free. Yokes of limitation, be delivered now. Every chain that has tied your hand and tied your feet. Hold on, please. Listen, we are still praying. In Acts chapter 12, watch this now. When Peter was in the prison, they tied two parts of his body. Number one, his hands. That's a symbol of your productivity. Number two, your feet. That is the symbol of your advancement. They didn't tie his mouth. They didn't tie his eyes. But they tied his hand and his feet. And the Bible says they bound him. That means to bind a man. It is not every part of him you need to tie. If you can tie his productivity and tie the basis for his advancement, that man is bound. Let me release someone by the anointing of the spirit. I declare your hands spiritually. My God, fire is coming on people's hands now. These hands that have not been released. Maybe your father's hand was tied. And all through his lifetime, he lived a miserable life. Maybe your mother's hand was tied. Some of you, the hands of your siblings. I come holding the key of David, given by the God of heaven himself. In the name of Jesus, may those chains be loose from your hands. Loose from your feet. Loose from your hands. Loose from your feet. Loose from your hands. Shapakatoskata. Loose from your feet. Man of God, I release you. It's time for your ministry to open up. I release you. Apostle, prophet, teacher, Makatosh Keteketa. Every altar sitting on your ministry. Every altar sitting on your ministry. Be released now. When Jesus was buried, it was not just enough that he was put in a tomb. The Bible said a stone was used to cover that place. So when Jesus resurrected, it was not just enough to come out to rise from the dead. That stone needed to be rolled away so he would come out. Same thing happened with Lazarus. Let me roll away any stone. When it was time for Lazarus to come back to life, ay, ay, ay. let me speak to someone. Everything dead in your life, hear the word of the Lord. Talita Kumi, come alive, come alive, come alive. Every mantle, every door of favor, every opportunity. 
that has been closed over your destiny. Everything that has died, hear the word of the Lord. Your influence, your relevance, come back to life now. Come back to life now. He said, son of man, can these bones live again? He said, only thou knowest. He said, prophesy. I want to prophesy. Oh, bones can come back to life. Dead businesses can come back to life. Dead spiritual dimensions. You used to have dreams, prophetic encounters. You used to pray for hours. But now something has happened to your life. May that fire come upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, hear me. When there is an attack in your life, there are three things that you will lose. Number one, the first thing that you will lose to tell you that the devil is attacking your life is your peace. The second thing that you will lose when the devil is attacking your life is the gift of man. If you lose money, it was not an attack. It can just be a business mistake. But when you lose men, I assure you, it's an attack. Hallelujah. Look at this. Every point in the life of Jesus, men and angels came to attend to him. But when he was on his way to go to the cross, men ran away from him. Only one man out of the multitudes of people he had helped to build and raise and do all of this, one walked with him and held the cross for him aside from John and his mother at the cross. So when you begin to lose your peace, Number two, when you begin to lose the gift of man, it is an attack from the pit of hell. Hallelujah. The third thing that you will know as a sign that is an attack is passion. Passion for the things of God. Passion for your destiny. Passion for actualizing your goals. Nothing matters again. Your fight, the Bible says the zeal of the Lord will perform this. There is something called the zeal of the Lord. When you lose your peace, when you lose men, when you lose passion, know immediately that there is an attack. I want to declare these three things over your life before we sit down. Number one, the Bible says, now the Lord of peace himself will give you peace always and by all means. I want to prophesy that by all means dimension of peace. That means whatever it takes for your peace. In the name of Jesus, may God make it so in your life. That by all means order of peace. Enjoy it in the name of Jesus. Number two, there are some of you who have jobs, but you do not have men. Some of you have intellect, you don't have men. Some of you have churches, but you do not have men. Men are very important. Men are in many cases a sign that God is with you. I have taught you that the proof of favor is not money. The proof of favor is access to the hearts of men. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call to your life the ministry of men. I call to your life the ministry of men. Enjoy the ministry of men. Enjoy divine connectors. Enjoy men of influence. Enjoy gifted men. Enjoy burden bearers. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, before you sit, let me pray for your passion. Some of you, your dreams have died because you are no longer serious about it. Everything you said you would do this year, the zeal. Some of you, even for ministry, you may be men and women of God, but sincerely, that zeal again, the zeal to fast gone, 
Zeal for God, gone. Zeal for your goals, gone. The resilience to push towards your destiny is gone. Right now, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I'm speaking as a prophetic word for someone. Let your zeal be restored. Let your zeal be restored. Your zeal for the house of God. Your zeal for the things of God. Your zeal for the pursuit of your destiny. Be restored in the name of Jesus. Please open your mouth in one minute and receive. I declare that I receive in the name of Jesus. For those in front, I decree and declare the hand of God rests upon you. That which you have been delivered from will never return to you again. You walk in the liberty that is in Christ. Go and return with your testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for staying to the end of this video. Thank you. We are very, very appreciative of your presence in this community. This is a community of believers. We are here to enlighten ourselves through the word of God, through practical life applicable teachings. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe to this channel. If you have not liked this video, please just take two seconds and just hit that like button and share this video with others to bless someone just as you have been blessed by these videos. It is only God that can do the impossible. And when you are faced with impossibility in your life, the only place to run to, the only person to run to is God. And that is why we encourage ourselves to keep studying the word of God, to keep praying, fasting, to keep meditating on the word of God so that God will come through for us. Have a nice time. God bless you. See you in another of our videos. And there are so many videos that we have posted so far. Go through our channels. Go through our channel and check on our videos and see how impactful they are going to be in your life. Thank you. God bless you. Keep shining for Jesus. Keep shining for God. Peace.